In today's episode, we talk our character dining experiences in which is a must or bust. I only hope that we never lose sight of one thing that was all started by a must. You are listening to the Main Street Magic Podcast with your hosts, Jeremy Stein and John Marone. Hello and welcome to Main Street Magic. I'm your host, Jeremy Stein, and I am joined by my good friend and co-host, John Marone. Good evening. In today's episode, we'll discuss popular character dining experiences and give our thoughts on what to look for when booking your next reservation. As always, make sure you check us out on the web at MainSTMagic.com, as well as like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at MainSTMagic. Uh, So obviously, character dining is very popular. Um, and we want to just give a little bit of insight on some of the experiences that we've had with character dining and maybe a little bit of uh, tips that we can give to our listeners on when to book, what to book, what are some of our favorites. So, so John, what are your thoughts on character dining? What are some of the things that you love about it? And uh, what's some of your go-tos? So character dining is popular, but it's also probably one of the things that gets the most negative feedback. You're definitely paying a higher price, and the food quality is probably the biggest complaint. So some of the things that I think we'll both talk about today is if you are choosing a character dining, you have to make the decision. Number one, how important is it that you're meeting the characters, and are there certain ones you're meeting? But definitely number two is how well do you want to eat? So most all the character meals are buffets, um, whether it's breakfast or dinner. They're pricey. I have my opinions on them. You talked about one to book. If you are doing some of the more popular ones and character meals are always popular, 180 days. Yeah. Uh, You know, you're you will be lucky to get um, a character meal any closer than that, especially if they include the big ones. You're doing Mickey and Minnie or that. It, it's hard to get that um, sooner. Now, one tip that I'll give that I've actually used, not for character dining, but just regular restaurants, is anybody can book 180 days out. You don't have to be a resort guest. You will have a credit card that you have to give them, but you can cancel that as long as it's over 24 hours ahead of time, yeah. you can cancel it with no charge. If you cancel or don't cho- cho- show, they charge you $10 per person yeah. on the reservation. So you will see a lot of people who drop reservations that day or two. So I've been able to pick up California Grill at 6 o'clock on that day that I was at Disney or on the next day because somebody dropped it, that that reservation was not available Uh, you know, three or four months ahead of time. So book your meals, but if you have some flexibility, then feel free to wait and check your My Disney Experience app um, for a Disney reservation at the last minute for that last day or two, and you'll be surprised sometimes what you see pop open. I've also had one where I had one booked, and I was inside of my 24 hours, but a place that was better opened up that we wanted to eat at. And so I called and told them, and they waived the fee because I was go- booking somewhere else. And while they said that wasn't normal, I, you know, it's really what I'm doing is I'm exchanging one place for another. Um, so plenty of things to do, but if you're going to book out, make sure you're booking out, you're planning that 180 days uh, ahead, and then know that you have some flexibility for it. Now, One of the ones, I think we're each going to talk about three here, and this isn't our top three. These are just three that we've experienced that we just want to kind of give our input on and give you overall a feeling of what's available. I'm going to have two that I really do like and I'll recommend, and one that you're going to do just because you have to. And let's start with that one. That's going to be Chef Mickey's. Mm -hmm. Chef Mickey's, to me, was a very – it's always popular because you get Mickey, Minnie, um, Donald, Goofy, Pluto. So you get the big five. five. Yep, you get the big five there. The ones that you want the kids to see. Um, you're in the contemporary. So if you are just happen to be at the Magic Kingdom, you could take the monorail or walk over or take the boat over so it's easy to get to and even go back to the park afterwards. 
you're as the kids are sitting besides everything that's going on you have the monorail gliding right through the lobby so the kids love seeing that plenty of stuff going on and it used to have a really good buffet the last couple times i've been there i have to say the quality of the food and the number of items has definitely decreased um i think the most popular thing right now is the dessert section all right, kids could take make their own ice cream, put cupcakes, and and add sprinkles and do everything. So to them, that's great. But I think overall, food wise, you're paying for the atmosphere, you're paying for the characters, you're paying for the buffet. So if those you need those big five characters, this is definitely a place to go to. But it's also a place that has expanded numerous times over the years. So it is no longer a small restaurant. I, you know, realistically it's taken over. I think if you go back to the contemporary to the early days, it's taken over two or three other restaurant spaces. So it is a huge space now, a lot of people. And if they can just up the food game, it would be one of my favorites, but they haven't. So this is one that you want to see those characters do it. Otherwise I think there's better out there. So what's uh, what's one for you? So I'm going to talk about Hollywood and Vine, which is over at Hollywood Studios. Depending on what meal you go to, it depends on the characters you'll meet. We happen to do lunch there. This is when both of my daughters were a little bit younger, about two years ago. So I want to say they're about five and seven when we went. And it's Disney Junior characters. So you have uh, Jake from the Neverland Pirates, Doc McStuffins, uh, Handy Manny, uh, and Sophia the First. When she first came out is when we went. For the price, it's not bad. For having young children that love Disney Junior, it's really good. The time that characters spend coming by your table was outstanding. The food, buffet, I would probably liken to a Golden Corral. Um, So you, you had a lot of options. I'll give them that. You had everything from baked chicken to a uh, Italian kind of station. You could make your own pasta, a salad, uh, really good desserts, which Disney, of course, always does really well. But but this is one that if you're already there and you're looking to book a character meal that you didn't plan ahead for, chances are you can probably book this one. We literally booked it the day before. So that is one of the positives. Again, like you said, you, you have to weigh your expectations, you know, versus food, characters, and those types of things. From a character level, if you have younger kids with, that love Disney Junior, this is top notch. From a food level, I, I wouldn't walk in there expecting too much. And if you have that in the back of your head, the moment you book, I actually think you can enjoy it. My daughter, my oldest daughter at the time was in love with Jake and the Neverland Pirates. The look on her face when he came around was worth every penny we spent. I, I will I will overlook the food. I will overlook the fact that it's very, very noisy because you're you're dealing with the younger crowd. Uh, and about every, I think it's maybe every 15 minutes, they do kind of a, a song and dance and get everybody involved and all the characters come out. But again, if you know these things going into, I think it can be quite enjoyable. Uh, so what's one of the other ones that you had and, and did you like it? Did you dislike it? Recommend, not recommend? No, so there's one that I... I actually like and recommend two of them. And this one here is at the Grand Floridian, 1900 Park Fair. Mm -hmm. Um, They have a breakfast. They have a dinner. um, There's also, you know, I even think an afternoon one there. We'll call it lunch. But they also do a tea party there, which is actually quite affordable for everything that you get. I'm one that when I'm looking at the buffets and the characters, I'm not looking at breakfast. That's just a mindset to me. For the price, I could just never justify high 20 or $30 in eggs and waffles. It just doesn't make sense to me. And if I'm going to eat, I, I, I know I'm going to be doing a lot of walking. I, I want to be light on my feet for the day. I don't want to gorge myself to say, I got to get my $35 worth of food out of this. Um, So I'll do, you know, so I'm going to lean towards the characters for for dinner. Dinner is um, actually Cinderella and Prince Charming. And there could be some other princesses there as well. When my daughter was little, um, Alexis, we went and Snow White was there and spent so much time with her. And, um, you know, it was a great time. So 
the food a little bit better as well um, than the traditional buffet. While a lot of it is regular, you know, buffet style food, they do have some stir fries or, you know, so just some different things there to choose from. Some different fish dishes that maybe are a little bit better than, say, a Chef Mickey that it's sitting out there for it. So this one... Don't worry about boy girl, right? Because with the princesses comes the prince, and we, even with the princesses, there are plenty of little boys who love the fact that Cinderella is, uh, you know, hanging all over and giving them kisses. And if not, I'm sure the dads are, you know, not, you know, pretty excited about agreed, that as well, agreed. right? You know, it's like, go ahead, here's one where I'll pose with somebody for the picture. <laughs> but at 1900 Park Fair, I just think it's a it's it's a nice setting. You're in the Floridian. Again, you're on the monorail loop. So if you happen to come over from the Magic Kingdom or even Epcot or that, you transfer over. It's an easy resort to get to. There's only, when you look at the princess meals, you do have Norway if you're in Epcot. But this could also be something that if you are um, don't want to burn a day's um, passes that day for a park, that this is maybe a non-park day that you're doing Disney Springs and different things, here's another character meal that you can plug in for that day, and you don't have to use a day for that. So that's my view on on Park Fair. What's another one for yourself? So I agree completely with the breakfast aspect. However, my next one is breakfast, and and there's one reason. It is Ohana's at the Polynesian with Lilo and Stitch because the only character dining they do is breakfast. Our family's huge Lilo and Stitch fans. We had to do this. We did it on our last trip in July uh, for my wife's birthday. First of all, the Polynesian. If you're if you've never stayed there, which I have not, we had never even been there. To walk in there and, and just walk in the lobby is that's almost worth it alone. So you walk in, uh, you go check in upstairs, and immediately after your reservation, you actually line up and you get a picture with Stitch. Photo pass, picture with Stitch. You don't get that at a lot of the different character you know, dining experiences. You, you get sat, and this isn't buffet, but it's family style. So they bring this giant platter to your table, and you've got the Mickey waffles and Stitch waffles. You've got, you know, um, bacon, sausage, ham, eggs, all this different food. The breakfast is actually really, really good. Uh, it's not greasy. It's not overpowering. And you kind of feel okay with them bringing you this giant plate And if you don't refill it, you're kind of okay with it. But here's where I come to my love-hate relationship with Ohana's Breakfast. Love the hotel. Love the characters. Love the view. Hate the price. It is expensive. Uh, For the four of us, after Tables in Wonderland, uh, which is a 20% discount, we were still looking at, prior to tip, $105. I mean, it's expensive. I would not let that deter you from doing it. It is still something I would recommend doing once. If you're big Lilo and Stitch fans, you also get Mickey, which, okay. which you can't, you know, you can't beat. Uh, and again, characters at any of these characters come around and they will spend the time they need. You, you, I've never been to one that I felt rushed. If you're aware of your surroundings, you rush yourself more than they do. You know, we get we got every picture we needed. We never felt once like these characters were trying to run off and get to the next table. The one thing I will say about this location is its proximity and all the giant windows that are facing in that restaurant. Don't trust your iPhone. Don't trust your your Samsung, your whatever. If you can, bring a good camera. What we found is we were taking all these pictures and they were backlit coming in from the water and and the sun rising. And most of our pictures were washed out. Because there were these giant sun blurs behind us. So number one tip would be bring a good camera, good point and shoot, whatever you have. um, Or align yourselves knowing that that could happen to your photos. Other than the price, this is one of my favorite character dinings we've ever done. And and Polynesian is unbelievable. We, We went afterwards, walked down, looked at the pool, walked down on the beach... You know, stuck our toes in the sand. They've got some swings and stuff like that. So uh, I would I would put it on your list of things to do. Um, so if we start to kind of round this out, look at yet another uh, character dining, what's something else that you really enjoy? So I'm going to take one in the park and off the beaten path. Um, and this is a good one. Um, it, and again, it's good because the food is a little bit unique. I 
buffets, love them, hate them, it doesn't matter. Disney has a couple good ones. I think Boma at Animal Kingdom, while it's not a character meal, is by far an excellent restaurant and easily the best buffet that they have. Yeah. This is actually Tusker House at Animal mm-hmm. Kingdom. Um, so Tusker House, you have Mickey, Goofy, Donald, and Daisy. So you have great characters. Yeah. It's not as popular of a location because a lot of people either don't know about it or before. And again, we everybody always says, right, um, Animal Kingdom was a half-day park. And so we build a ride with a five-hour wait. And now it makes it a full-day park, right? <laughs> so this is a way that a lot of people never made it through dinner. So you didn't always know that Tusker House was there um, doing it. But they have... The carved sirloin. They have rotisserie pork and chicken. They have curries. They have spiced tofu. They just have a lot of different selections that you don't get from the other ones. Um, So I liked it. I actually even had a character dinner there buffet for Thanksgiving a couple of years ago. must be two years ago. Um, Ate there, and, you know, it had Donald and Daisy and, and Mickey and Goofy. And the food for Thanksgiving, you had your traditional Thanksgiving, plus they even did some of the, you know, I won't say that they're too deep into, you know, the African type food um, to theme it, but at least you had some of those different spice choices and some of them were excellent. So I, I think Tusker House is one of those under the radar type character meals. And if you're going to be in Animal Kingdom and you do your regular rides during the day and you kind of wait for maybe Pandora to clear out or you want to go into Pandora um, at twilight or the evening to be able to see all the lights in that, Tusker House is a decent enough character meal if that's what you're interested in. You get some good characters and then you could head over and do whatever you'd like to do for the rest of the evening. Yeah, And what um, with Tusker House, <clears throat> from what I've heard and I've not been there, is that in addition to... All of the, the the curries and the you know those different African in, inspired flavors. There's a lot of stuff for people that maybe aren't as adventurous, you know, with with flavors and stuff. So it seems like from the things that I've heard, there's something there for every single person. You don't have to think, oh, that's going to be this adventurous food, and I don't like these spicy you know foods and stuff like this. There's something for everybody there. Absolutely, and that that's why I think you get your regular buffet style food. But if you want to go and try something different, and that's a great thing, right? You didn't burn a whole meal. Yeah. Again, something you're not sure if you'd like. But you want to try a little bit of the curry and see if it's something that you like, go ahead. It's there. And um, they have a lot of different things like that. So I, I think it's well laid out as well. It doesn't get a lot of bottlenecks of people all ending up in the same area that you're waiting in a long line. So they have different stations. So you can kind of get around there pretty easily that not a bad place at all. Something that if you haven't thought of it, give it a try. As you mentioned with Pandora, they have recently now opened the pathway. So if you're at Tusker house and you leave, you were to head towards uh, festival of the lion King, they've now opened the pathway direct to Pandora from there. So it's a secondary area. So like you said, you can enjoy Tusker house, get out your straight shot to Pandora, enjoy the nighttime over there. So I mean, that, that sounds like a win-win for me. And, and and I'll wrap it up with with mine. And this would be one of my favorite places that I think we've ever eaten, uh, which is Cinderella's Royal Table. Now, we went several years ago. I got two princesses, of course, three if you count my wife. So I it's not something that you're, you're really going to take boys to because there are no princes. Uh, but for princesses, this is the number one spot. You're eating inside of Cinderella's Castle. You have every major classic Disney princess that you could think of coming by your table, and the food was outstanding. Uh, This is not a buffet. It is a um, three-course meal, so you have a fixed menu to pick from, and there's a couple items for each, each course. So you have an appetizer, your main course, and a dessert. And the food we had was absolutely outstanding. If you're taking your young girls there, dress them up. You don't have to go to Bippity Boppity Boutique or anything, but, you know, throw them in a throw them in a princess dress and take them because it'll make the experience that much better. Uh, they, they get a little princess wand they get to take with them. There's plenty of pictures that, you know, to be had. And the only thing I would recommend is it's very, very expensive. So when we went, uh, one of the few times we actually did the Disney dining plan 
And what you can do is trade in two table service credits per person to have Cinderella's Royal Table. And when I did the math, because I did, I wanted to make sure we were getting the best bang for our buck on that dining plan. I did the math and it was well, well worth it to have paid for the dining plan for that trip just to trade in those two table services uh, for that exact meal. So again, I, I would highly recommend the Royal Table. That's one of those that you're talking about 180 days in advance. I, I hear that it's it's not become quite the hot ticket ever since you know the Be Our Guest restaurant opened. That's becoming more popular. But make sure you get plenty advance reservation, and I think you'll be okay. So what's what's something you're looking forward to do in the future as far as character dining goes? So I'll bring one thing up since you brought up the uh, Bippity Boppity Boutique, and especially if you have the girls and they're dressed up, is you can stop in, go to the desk, and they will go ahead and give the girls some pixie dust so Perfect. they will for free they'll go ahead and plop some uh some pixie dust or sparkles right in their hair um and they'll be on their way and feel special about it so you can do that at any time yeah um so a neat little t- tip there when i look at it you know i don't think that there's any character meals i'm dying to do or that i've missed my thing that if i keep it you know on food and we'll say just because the beast is there and he meets people not really character dining but we'll plug it in there i'd like to give it another try people love be our guest i went and there was uh i think my wife plus all four um, children went and some of them really liked it i thought it was kind of eh at the time i thought for the price and the portion size it just didn't match up the inside is just beautiful um, I'd like to give breakfast a try there because I hear good things about breakfast. Um, and I'd like to give dinner another try. I've just been reluctant to. It hasn't been that high on my radar just because that first experience. There's so many good restaurants there. And now that Disney Springs might as well just call it Disney Restaurant Springs. Yes. I mean, it's yeah, the, for sure. it, there's just so many great places there to choose from that the resorts and the parks definitely have to up their game. Um, but I'd like to give Be Our Guest another try. And that might be sacrilegious to everybody out there to hear somebody say, gosh, that wasn't your most incredible meal ever. It really wasn't. Neat, but, you know, so-so. I yeah. mean, on it, thank goodness I saved the 20% for Tables in Wonderland. But, see, I'm with you there. We have done breakfast, uh, which was very good. We've done lunch, which is very, very so-so. We have not done dinner at Be Our Guest where we get to see, you know, the Beast and, and Belle and all that. And that's that's on our list to do. We've heard the food was better at dinner. We weren't that impressed with anything else, like you said. So we're interested to do that one and, and, and see, you know, if that's something we'll enjoy. There's, there's plenty of character dining to, to come. Uh, we'll certainly try out some more, I'm sure, and, and we'll get back on this episode and, and give some updates. You know, that's it for us right now. Make sure you visit us online at MainSTMagic.com. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter at MainSTMagic. As always, subscribe on iTunes, leave us a rating and review. Uh, That's all for now, and we'll see you real soon.